Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and Unify has released their 6.0.20 Unify controller software, but stop, don't upgrade it. And this is one of the reasons that I'd like to do testing and then do some videos about whether or not that testing went well. And I do appreciate all the people said, hey, Tom, I kind of wait for you to tell me whether or not I should upgrade my controller because, well, I don't have the network engineering time to spend uh, re-engineering the network because I have something else to do. I completely get it, and I'm telling you, don't upgrade. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this video. This is very fresh information. I guess you could say some of these forum posts are only hours old, but I wanted to get the word out there for people who are feeling as though they should jump on that 6.0 version of the Unify controller. So we're going to say not to upgrade it. If that's all you want from the video, do that. I'm going to leave all the links on below. If you want to continue on further, great. I'm going to talk about some of the details and some of the mitigations that appear to be working. We're still, like I said, solving some of this and waiting for Unify's response on it because that would be interesting. Maybe they have a patch coming soon. I really, really hope they do. And uh, if you can click the like button and first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. So over here in the Unify forums is the Unify Network Controller 6.0.20 with look at all these new features, improvements, and bug fixes. They need another one. Known issues. VLANs beyond UAP wireless downlinks may not have connectivity. Creating VPNs and UDM may result in commit errors. Uh, that's the least of your worries here. Let's dive into it. So me and Riley Chase, I'll leave the conversation pulled up here. We started talking this morning. Now, Riley is the owner of Hostify. I've reviewed the product before. I would say Riley and the Hostify team is the foremost expert on Unify hosting because they do it at scale, and I really like their product. That also means people that are using them to manage and can take care of all the updates. They do their own testing as well. And because of the volume of clients they have, they get a lot of insight. And they're really recommending don't do it. So me and Riley talked this morning and uh, we're gonna throw, talk about a few forum posts. Now, obviously, if you just go to the Hostify Twitter account, they've been tweeting, don't do it. I wanna help get the word out, don't do it. Um, so we can get that out there. So the first one is there's some type of mystery VLANs that get created. Now, this is some type of bug that appears to be um, creating an extra VLAN that causes a issue with connectivity and breaking some of there. So there's a few people uh, that have found kind of mitigations for it just by deleting this VLAN zero that it creates, this extra that you didn't create VLAN. And by doing that, they're able to get things online. Most people just seem to be rolling back and that's kind of an easy solution. The problem is once you roll up to six, it pushes out some settings that causes the devices to start meshing to each other. So there's two forum posts in Reddit that I'll leave links to where people have some mitigations, but this one kind of made the most sense to me over in the Unify forums. Leave a link to this one here. And this person figured out a way to do this without upgrading. So essentially what they decided was going on, well, like I said, did the time, looked at some network engineering, and this is a forum post. I have not validated this is true, but feels pretty true And people talking about mitigations here, um, that they found that the device the Unify access points start meshing to each other even though they have a wired backhaul. So the Unify APs have the ability to mesh to each other in like an isolation mode. So if you have one that has power but for some reason loses its backhaul back to the switch, it can actually still be working as a mesh unit. It's a great feature that Unify has. It's apparently broken in version six because if you start meshing something that also has a backhaul, you create a loop. And then spanning tree should be fixing that and not cause a break broadcast storm, but that isn't happening. And that's something that's apparently wrong in the new version. So uh, they have some mitigations and fixes for this. Now, for people that are stuck in this broadcast storm, this actually is what creates the challenge. So even though you know how to mitigate the broadcast storm, a broadcast storm, well, it's a storm and it 
breaks the ability for you to log into these devices. So uh, sometimes you have to start rebooting switches to kind of stop the storm from happening so you can start getting into the devices or start offlining your access points. Obviously, this is extremely disruptive if you have a bunch of users and uh, no one, you know, you. IT should be something almost transparent where nobody knows what you're doing. That way they complain, like, what do we pay you for? We don't have problems and et cetera. Um, this is one of those times where IT is like, why do we pay you? Now we have problems uh, type situation. You know, it's, sometimes IT is a thankless job occasionally, but this is one of those times where you will definitely get the user's attention if you push this update in your environment. I'm hoping you see this video before then. You go, wow, I know how to mitigate it. And you can, I don't know, and I may play around and do a follow-up video if there's some pre-mitigation, like before the upgrade, can I just mass disable it? The problem is I need to be able to do this on all the sites we host. So that seems kind of tedious. And this is where talking for people like at Hostify because Riley does things like looks at the database and flips switches and database at scale as opposed to trying to go through each menu and do it, which is obviously really tedious. And uh, so there's going to be some you know, tooling around that we're going to have to do to look at this for people like myself that want to play with it, for people um, that just go, I want this to work. What should I do? Wait. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the old five version controller. It works great. We're not experiencing any trouble with it. It's quite stable. And uh, yeah, so I'm not upgrading anything that is mission critical. We do have other lab systems. So I may do some more testing with to see, you know, how the bug progresses. And of course, once again, we'll wait for an update from Unify that hopefully just flips those switches or unflips them. I guess which way is it going is kind of the curiosity. Um, so I'll keep diving into this and I'll leave a link to these forum posts. And don't worry, there's more. Um, people are still, uh, as this upgrade comes out and it suggests that you upgrade or people who do crazy things like tell systems to auto update. Uh, I auto update for security on like my Linux systems because I feel very comfortable with that. We do have auto update on Windows systems because I feel comfortable. Well, as comfortable as you can be with Windows. You know, that's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. You're insecure if you don't and well, Windows updates, that's, yeah. It's not like this is, updates are unheard of problems in the IT industry. They're actually the biggest reason updates don't get done, insert name of any company, and you'll find them to be, yeah, the, the reason that we're always busy in IT, why there's an endless amount of work for us. So don't upgrade. Uh, hopefully you don't have auto upgrade turned on. And if you do, rolling back seems to be a solution that works, but sometimes you may have to do some reprovisioning. Best of luck. Uh, I'll leave links to these forum posts and go from there. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.